We're going to Dysfunction Junction, where it may be rainy and painful. We gotta get there to grab the tools so we won't be loud and hateful. Got to learn to be thankful for every lesson learned. Because your healing and peace of mind has surely been well earned. Yeah. Well, hey, hey, happy Sunday. Uh, Chris here. That's me. And this is our sixth episode of Dysfunction Junction. Yeah, we moving on up, honey. We are getting it together. Um, I hope you have watched the last five episodes. And if you haven't, feel free to go back and check it out. So... The last episodes were all about childhood. Tried to give you a bit of a, um, understanding as to why this even is a thing, why I started it, why I needed it, and why I'm here for anyone who needs it too. Um, now, last week, I don't know what I was feeling. Something was going on. Um, I don't know whose it was, I, you know, but I got through it. Um, I still don't know what it was, though. So hopefully, prayerfully, it'll reveal itself at some point. But I'm in a better space. So today, um, we're going to move on up uh, from childhood, and we're going to start discussing just all kinds of stuff, okay? Um, I want to talk about how the childhood stuff um, affects adulthood and dating. Now, okay, one thing about me, okay, Chris going to sit on some stuff until Chris ready to talk about it, okay? Uh, Risa Tisa, okay? Um, I'm very observant. I just, I just sit back and I just read and I just look and I just pay attention. Okay. So all the people, she's so stupid. Why she do that? Oh, she done. She's stupid. Ooh. Oh, you ain't ever been there. I've been there. Maybe not to that magnitude. But honey, we have all played the part. So let's not criticize and act like we better than or holier than thou. Because we ain't. None of us. Myself included. Now, speaking of self. Okay. Uh, when you have a narcissistic parent, uh, you tend... And look, uh, I don't know if this was her situation. Let me be clear. I don't know if that was her situation. Okay. Um, I'm speaking on myself. Uh, and just trying to tie it all together. So I, I want to I want to be clear. I don't know that lady's history. I know what she said. I know she said that she was low self esteem and 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 wanting to be with someone and wanted it to be her turn. That much I do know. But I don't know you know her back end history. Okay, so let's clear that right on. All right. So now that that's out the way, um, let's go back. So okay, um. Growing up, you know, I, I wanted to be loved um, and I just wasn't getting it, right? So, you know, you tend to um, get yourself caught up. And I mean, everybody's trauma is different, right? Everybody's life is different. So what might hurt you to the core might be my motivation. What might be someone else's motivation, you know what I'm saying, is their thorn in their side. So it's like, Everybody's different, okay? Um, but I know for me, I just wanted to be loved. I lost my daddy. I had my mama. We wasn't really getting along. We, you know, we didn't have just the best relationship. I was sheltered. Um, a lot of places I couldn't go. A lot of things I couldn't do. Um, and so, you know, especially as 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 young girls, that, that fairy tale, that Disney princess, that um, oh, we got to, you know, have the the big home, the two-car garage or whatever, and the picket fence. Listen, we think about all this shit before we even been in a relationship. We don't even know what it is to love ourselves, nonetheless, somebody else. But the movies, the music, you know, all of that, I think it plays a part. Okay, so when I was younger, I got myself caught up in an off and on 17-year hell-ish relationship, okay? But in that, I learned a lot. Um, and you just have to give yourself grace, no matter what, right? You have to learn how to love yourself. You have to learn mm -hmm. how to, um, be alone. Oh my God. Why so many people scared to be alone? Why are they so scared? I love my own company. 
Again, that might be from being sheltered. I don't know. I feel like I'm getting off track. Let's let's get back. Okay, so I figured this might be better. Let's let's do this, okay? Y'all know I keep that thing on me. All right, let's talk about it. Because um, you know, a lot of people love to to scoff and say, Oh, why do we always talk about childhood? Oh, that's in the past. Leave it in the past. It doesn't affect me now. You don't even know. You don't even know, do you? <laughs> 10 ways, oh, I'm sorry, psychology today. Y'all know that's my jam, okay? Um, 10 ways childhood trauma can manifest in adult relationships. Fears of abandonment, huh? Huh? Staying with somebody that you know you don't need to be with, but you're with them because you're scared to be alone? Sound familiar? Mm-hmm. Um, getting irritable or easily annoyed with others. Um, needing a lot of space or time to yourself. Maybe I'm working on that one too. Unequal financial and household responsibilities. Settling and staying in a relationship much longer than its expiration date. Um, constant arguing or fighting in relationships or avoiding conflict at all costs. So instead of arguing all the time, you just stuff all your feelings down inside of you. That's not healthy. Um, not knowing how to repair after fights, serial monogamy, worrying that you are settling, being fearful of committing or avoiding relationships altogether. Or, oh, I'm sorry, and number 10, trying to change their partner. Now, again, the title is 10 Ways Childhood Trauma Can Manifest in Adult Relationships. I'm just saying, it's worth looking into, right? It's worth thinking about, hmm, how did my growing up affect me in my adulthood and in my relationships? It's just a thought. Okay, I found another one. So the first one was 10 ways. This is six ways that are rough. Okay, so see, we're we, we taking out the word trauma. I know some people get triggered by trauma. Um, but just remember, anytime you trigger, it's some healing that you, you know you know what I'm talking about. Okay, six ways. Uh oh, I lost a child. Okay, six ways that a rough childhood can affect adult relationships. Let's see. All right, loss of childhood. I never really had a childhood, or I can't remember much from growing up. Uh, missing parts of oneself. I've always felt like something was missing, but I didn't know what it was. Three, attraction to destructive relationships. I'm the kind of person who always dates people who are bad for me. Oh, let's stay there for a minute. Let's stay there for a minute. Because when you grow up in a toxic environment, toxic is normal, right? So if you're attracted to destructive relationships, don't see the correlation? Y'all. Oh, I didn't even finish. Child, hold Number four, avoidance of relationships. I'm someone who is better off alone. Um, five, avoidance of oneself. I don't like to think about myself. It only makes me feel bad. Six, difficulty integrating emotions into one's identity. I'm not the kind of person who has strong feelings about this. Whether we want to realize it or not, our childhood affects our relationships. So healing is mandatory. Now, I know healing don't feel good. Oh, I know. I know it does not. But it's important and it's necessary. And uh, I hope you get it so that you can be a better person, so you can attract the better person, so you can just be in a peaceful state um, and, and live toxic free, right? That's all anyone wants. Who grew up like that is just not have to live like that any longer. So listen, um, of course, I'm going to share the information at the end. I hope mm -hmm. this resonates with you. And if it does, can you please share? We got a lot of healing to do, y'all. So until next time, I holla.